first up, if you were given the opportunity to swap roles with anybody in the Star Wars film franchise, who would you pick and why? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. It's hard to answer on the fly. Everyone uh, so far, or almost everyone, has said you. Me? Yes. Oh, it has to be someone within no, this? No, any film you want. Uh, probably Jabba the Hutt. He doesn't have to go anywhere. People give him um, uh, grapes a lot. He has like a little guy that runs errands for him. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't have to worry about weight or time or really anything. Uh, uh, he, and he gets to watch a show where, you know, uh, <laughs> this is just going to a dark place where there's death and murder and he just enjoys it. Uh, I'll skip over that. Uh, uh, I'll just say job of the hut for personal reasons. There was a very practical approach to that answer <laughs> Yeah, then it just start. went south. Yeah. So going oh, in it out. the cute creature direction right now, everybody's super into Baby Yoda, melting hearts all over the place. So we're doing Baby Yoda's first. So think babies first. Okay. If you had the opportunity to see Baby Yoda's first fill in the blank, what would it be? So first, I don't know, bath, Christmas, oh word, God. something like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first time eating peanut butter. Uh, that's what I'd pick. I re I'm like the biggest peanut butter fan in the world, so yeah. you just won this game. All right, great. <laughs> um, now to this movie a little, and all three actually. I was curious, what do you think uh, the movies and the trilogy overall got out of passing the story baton from JJ to Ryan and back to JJ that it might not have had had it been one director or a different director on all three installments? Well, there's certainly ideas that I think J.J. had that, um, you know, that he let go of anyway. I don't know if that would have been different. I mean, you know, so it, it forces you to uh, shake up your idea. But one thing that, and, and again, I think it's also the nature of creating anything. You have your idea even at the start of your movie of what you it's going to be. And then over the course of it, you know, because you have to give it away to people, you give it to the actors, you give it to the set design, you give it to costumes, it evolves into something that you don't anticipate. So I don't think you could ever anticipate what it's going to start out as and what, mm -hmm. it, what it finishes. I, I When I met J.J., he told me in our first meeting an overall arc for this character um, where he would start the last movie. I, no one knew how it would end. Even when we kind of started this, we didn't really know how it was going to end. So that was really exciting. Also, it's a, you know a, a six. It was a six-year journey that you know it, it, we, we were building towards. So it affects all your choices in Force Awakens and uh, Last Jedi. That you know finally you're. Uh, putting a cap on something, hopefully. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things about Kylo Ren in particular is that, yeah, maybe you could label him a big bad, but he also has a lot of very vulnerable moments in these movies. So if you could pick the one moment in this trilogy where he came across as the most empathetic or human to you, which moment would you pick? That's hard to... Maybe a moment in... Wait, of the first two movies? or All, th all three uh, of them, because I've got a whole list in my head even without <laughs> seeing this one. I, I, there's uh, there, really, there is a lot. There's a lot to choose from, and I'm not just being vague. But there, there uh, hopefully this one, there's a, 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 a good moment where you um, uh, uh, really see him, uh, maybe. I, I, I hope. I, I mean, I don't know. We've been talking about... Uh, with uh, people before about masks, and that's such a huge, uh, you know, iconography of Star Wars that you just that we took for granted that we had to reimagine. So, what is it about someone who hides himself, you know, or presents the person to the world, but underneath is something completely different? And I think for the maybe there's a moment in this one where uh, that's surprising. God, this is so vague. Out for it. Yeah, what, what a vague answer. Good job answer. not spoiling anything. <laughs> if you were to name one unsung hero, of Rise of Skywalker, who would it be and why? One unsung hero? Yeah, because we know the ensemble, we know JJ very well, but is there anyone, maybe like a PA or someone at craft service that had you covered one day when you really needed it that made a difference in your work here? Amanda, my dresser. You know, I've been with her for six years from the very beginning, and the costume, similar to the character, has evolved. It started off. And and still, it, you know, it's supposed. It was supposed to be ill-fitting to, you know, manifest physically what was going on internally. Maybe he's uncomfortable. His helmet's, you know, not polished. And and always at the end of all of these takes, you, I had my dresser Amanda, who we had we had gotten things to a shortcut. We just knew each other so intimately, and she sees me after after things, before things. Um, 
that thank you for that question I get to uh, relive that uh, with that you know no one would really know but exactly. f she was an important part of my day because uh, there's things you really can't reach and she's also so much shorter than I am so I, <laughs> <laughs> I have to duck a lot you know we found a good uh, good way of working